Have you ever wondered why Jesus ascended to heaven early on Easter morning, only to return to earth that afternoon? What were the devil and his angels doing in heaven that morning? Following his resurrection, Jesus was promptly summoned to heaven to openly and lawfully dethrone Lucifer as the prince of this world. Lucifer and his mighty demons had tried everything to prevent this from happening, but Jesus overcame them fair and square. Imagine the following events with me. Jesus' triumph prompted heaven to hold its first victory parade. Billions of holy angels lined both sides of the Golden Avenue, leading into the Holy City and to the Father's throne. The angelic host on one side of the roadway sang out, while the other group reacted with admiration and praise. Raise up your heads, gates. Raise up your old doors, so that the King of Glory may enter. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord is powerful and formidable in warfare. Lift up your heads, gates, and ancient doors, so that the King of Glory may enter. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord Almighty is the King of Glory. When Jesus' procession arrived at the Father's throne, there was a pause, and the Father spoke for the fourth time since his birth from Mary. He gave his approval to Jesus, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The joy that greeted this proclamation was greater than anything that had ever occurred in paradise. The joyful angels spontaneously arose, singing the processional repeatedly. Jubilation and applause ensued. Jesus' victory could not be hailed enough. Finally, the Father gestured for stillness, and heaven fell silent. The Father spoke from his unapproachable light and summoned Jesus to his seat. Jesus ascended and bowed before the Father, who spoke again. Jesus has secured the salvation of sinners, resisted each temptation, led a faultless life, suffered beyond the pale that sin imposes shown on the cross that he loves me with all of his heart, mind, and soul. He showed that he loves his neighbors as himself. As a result of his love, trust, patient perseverance, and great sacrifice, Jesus has redeemed earth and is now crowned King of Earth. The Father went on to say, Your throne, O God the Father calls Jesus, God, because Jesus is a co-eternal member of Godhead, will remain forever and ever. Scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love justice and despise immorality. So, God, your God, has elevated you above your colleagues. You lived among the angels as one of them and among humans as one of them. From now on, I am elevating you above your companions as their king by anointing you with the oil of gladness. 9. When the Father had done speaking, heaven's arches erupted with gladness. The Father was overjoyed to grant Jesus the earth as his dominion for eternity. Ten and the holy angels recognized he merited it. The statement King of Earth is significant since it indicates that Lucifer's 4,000-year reign as Prince of this world was over. The second Adam redeemed what had been taken from the first. 11. The sight of Lucifer and his minions offended and disgusted the holy angels. Their previous buddies were abhorrent beyond description. The devil recognized that he no longer had diplomatic access to heaven. His title was revoked. He felt humiliated. His fate was sealed. He had lost everything but his hate for Jesus and the Father, as well as his fellow angels, who would face the same fate as his Lord. The tables had turned so quickly. On Friday afternoon, they were overjoyed to see Jesus die. They tried their hardest to shut his grave. Around forty hours later, Jesus was proclaimed King of Earth. Lucifer could do nothing to alter this fundamental fact. Following Jesus' coronation, the Father asked him to sit on a specially constructed throne to the right of his own. After he took his seat, everyone was waiting to see what happened next. Jesus addressed his opponent and revealed the charge of treason. Punishment was an eternal expulsion from paradise. After the announcement, Jesus ordered the devil and his disciples to depart paradise. Lucifer and his angels rebelled. When the wicked nature is stripped of its greed, all that remains is bitter opposition, falsehoods, and vengeance. Please memorize the following passage. Then war erupted in heaven. 
Michael and his angels attacked the dragon, who fought back with his own angels. But he was insufficiently powerful, and they lost their position in paradise. The big dragon was thrown down, that old serpent known as the devil, or Satan, who leads the entire world astray. He was thrown to the ground, along with his angels. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now has arrived the salvation, power, and reign of God. Jesus ordered the devil and his disciples to depart paradise. Lucifer and his angels rebelled. When the wicked nature is stripped of its greed, all that remains is bitter opposition, falsehoods, and vengeance, and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been thrown down. Revelation 12-7-9 After evicting Lucifer, Jesus entered the Father's unapproachable light for a personal meeting to discuss topics agreed upon when Adam and Eve sinned. Afterward, Jesus and the Father hugged. Jesus then returned to earth for forty days. Jesus needed to prepare his disciples for the future, and the Father wanted people to see that Jesus was alive. The War of Heaven's Timing The Bible states that the fight recounted in Revelation 12-7-9 took place on Resurrection Sunday. Many Christians mistakenly believe that this conflict occurred before Adam and Eve sinned. However, according to Scripture, this is impossible. Here's why. When Jesus expelled Lucifer from heaven, a thunderous announcement was heard across heaven's court. Then, I John heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now at this time have come the salvation, power, and kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Messiah, anointed one. Using his commander-in-chief abilities, as Michael the archangel, Jesus and his angels expelled Lucifer and his angels from heaven's court and a victorious Jesus assumed the role of earth's representative in heaven's court. The messenger continues, For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. Consider this statement again. Lucifer is called the accuser of our blood brothers and sisters. Lucifer is referred to be the accuser of our brothers and sisters. The angels address the saints as our brothers and sisters. It's vital to memorize this text. The fight in Revelation 12 to 7 could not have taken place before Adam and Eve sinned since there would have been no brothers for Lucifer to accuse at the time. Lucifer's allegations began when Adam and Eve sinned when he argued that God's administration was unjust since God provided mercy and salvation to penitent sinners but not to himself or his rebellious angels. However, these claims were untrue because God had tried several times and waited patiently for the devil and his angels to repent, but they refused. In the Bible, Lucifer is chastised twice for propagating fallacious arguments. One explicit statement is found in Revelation 12.10, which states, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Only when the payment for man's salvation was paid could this statement have been spoken. The devil and his angels recognized their fate when Jesus emerged from the tomb, and they were not going to submit to a just defeat. The devil would not cede to anybody, especially someone he detested. His position as the prince of this world in the court of heaven. The devil could only give up his position by force, and that is precisely what took place. The devil and his angels were driven from heaven by Jesus and his angels through combat. One explicit statement is found in Revelation 12.10, which states, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Only when the payment for man's salvation was paid could this statement have been spoken. The devil and his angels recognized their fate when Jesus emerged from the tomb, and they were not going to submit to a just defeat. The devil would not cede to anybody, especially someone he detested, his position as the prince of this world in the court of heaven. The devil could only give up his position by force, and that is precisely what took place. The devil and his angels were driven from heaven by Jesus and his angels through combat. Take note of the final word in the following poem. Short. 
This term has significance in this context because it portends the impending fall of Lucifer. If Lucifer was 100,000 years old on Resurrection Sunday when he was driven out of heaven, then the next 3,000 years, from Jesus' death until the conclusion of the 1,000 years in Revelation 20, are in fact short. Therefore, celebrate, because Jesus has won, and the devil has been banished from this place forever. The legend of Lucifer's rebellion is a multifaceted and intriguing tale with strong roots in Christian doctrine. However, during this period of rebellion, where was Jesus? And what about Lucifer's rebellion did he do? Keep watching as we examine this subject from a biblical perspective today. Before turning into Satan, Lucifer was an archangel who oversaw worship in God's throne room. According to the Bible, this being had excellent trading abilities and could walk on fire-lit stones. He was revered in heaven and had perfect wisdom. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. The Bible says in Ezekiel 28, I ordained you to be a guardian cherub, and that is why you were anointed. You were on God's sacred mount, strolling around flaming stones. From the moment of your creation until sin was discovered in you, you were perfect in all that you did. You were violent and sinned because of your extensive trade. So I drove you from the mount of God in shame and banished you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn, declares the book of Isaiah. You who once brought the nations to their knees have now been consigned to earth. You vowed in your heart to ascend to the heavens, to set up your throne above the stars of God, to sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, the highest point of Mount Zaphon, to ascend above the clouds, and to become like the highest. However, you are transported to the afterlife and the bottom of the pit. Scripture thus states that Satan aspired to become God and rise above God's stars. It is now evident that God cast him out of heaven and down into the earth's depths. The place where Satan resides on earth is called hell. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. According to the first chapter of John's Gospel, he was there in the beginning with God. Nothing that has been made could have been made without him. Everything was made through him. Angels and everything else were created by the Word, who is Jesus. Jesus was therefore known as the Word before he was given his earthly name. He was the word which the Father of God spoke when he said, Let there be light. The goal of Lucifer and his followers' insurrection was to overthrow God's authority in heaven. There was a great cosmic upheaval at that time. On this occasion, Jesus was present, and he stood with his Father, just as he declared in John, I and my Father are one. Jesus considered Lucifer as a son and loved Lucifer the Father. According to the Bible, he was a son made in the likeness of God the Father and the Son of the Morning. How are we aware of this? Because God is covered in precious stones, according to Revelation 4. It states, And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Furthermore, Ezekiel ch 28 states, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Carnelian, chrysolite, emerald, topaz, onyx, jasper, lips lazuli, turquoise, and beryl. When speaking of Lucifer, the day you were created, your mountings and settings were ready, made of gold. The book of Exodus reveals the ironic priesthood where Aaron was commanded to wear a breastplate with 12 different precious stones on it representing the 12 tribes of Israel. This is another way that we know that precious stones are engraved into God himself and that Lucifer is revealed. God was showing humanity his likeness. God makes it very evident to us. Given that Lucifer was created in God's image, it's critical to realize that both the Father and Jesus loved Lucifer. They did not despise him. Although there is no explicit account of Jesus' involvement in Lucifer's rebellion in the Bible, Jesus was undoubtedly present in heaven because he was God, the second member of the Trinity. He was and still is. From this angle, 
The fact that Jesus is in heaven attests to his position as the supreme authority, even in the face of disobedience. In the midst of chaos, Jesus would have provided stability and hope as the Prince of Peace. In the end, the Bible describes Lucifer and his followers as being expelled from heaven. This incident is viewed as a victory of God's justice and sovereignty. Jesus would later assume human form and journey to earth as the Savior, providing humanity with forgiveness and redemption, following this rebellion. But what you must realize is that in the grand story of Christian theology, Jesus' presence at the time of Lucifer's rebellion bears witness to his divine role in the cosmos and his ultimate mission to bring about humanity's salvation. The specifics may always be unknown, as is the case with many theological issues, but the significance of Jesus' function as the eternal word and savior is still a cornerstone of Christian doctrine. What does this teach us? We can discover that having a haughty demeanor will help you succeed in life, but having a puffed up sense of pride will lead to a fall. Jesus stated it as follows, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It can be discovered in Matthew 23, 12. The next video talks about what happened when Satan appeared before God in the Bible, which is about to start playing on the screen right now if you like this one. Remember to subscribe for more content similar to this. I'll see you again later until then. I'm going to miss you.